So there was a lot of mention of extension in the talks earlier, and I do think that we have a unique ability to reach uh, practitioners through our networks. Um, it is true we're somewhat stressed in our resources. So this project was addressing the issue of creating community climate adaptation plans. There are some federal requirements uh, that certain metropolitan planning organizations uh, consider climate change when they're doing their long-term plans. Also, as it was mentioned, a lot of planning organizations are forward-thinking. They're very practical to um, uh, but they need to have help with the community engagement and outreach portion, which is required. Under both of these scenarios, there needs to be a public input process, but it can be very sticky and messy, as you can imagine. This was what we proposed. I have a joint PI who's not here, Wayne B.A. He's in the School of Planning, Design, and Construction. And many of you have probably seen this before. It's from the Yale Center on Climate Communication. It just so shows the variation in perceptions and attitudes about climate change. We tend to hear mostly from the alarmed over in the blue circle on the left and the dismissive. They tend to be the loudest voices, but we don't always get a chance. There's not often forums where the concerned and cautious can, uh, can ask questions in a, in a safe way. So our approach was based on a deliberation with analysis, which is something that um, Dr. Dietz has written about and uh, suggested. Uh, deliberation is the process of sifting through um, information and taking personal stakes and personal values into account, um, as well as scientific information, and then making a decision. So we had two facilitated public discussions in these two communities that, that we chose to receive our technical assistance. I guess I should back up a little and say I'm part of a project team, um, an interdisciplinary project team with extension educators, and we chose two different communities in Michigan to offer our technical assistance to create these climate adaptation plans. And they had to, these communities, we did kind of an all call through our networks, and these communities applied for uh, our project team's help, and we chose two. So one was in Marquette, and the other is the Southwest Michigan Metropolitan Planning Organization. And within these two communities, then, we facilitated two public discussions where we pretty much put out an all call to give input on climate change uh, uh, adaptation views. And so at the first one, we had the public identify their climate concerns, and at the second one, we had them prioritize strategies that we brought forward to them in terms of uh, adapting to, to climate change. And we engaged decision makers through these public meetings. They were part of many meetings with us where they helped us design and um, figure out how to communicate with the public. Uh, they were also present at the meetings and participated in the meetings. We conducted interviews with technical experts after these two public meetings to get their input on what the public thought was important. And almost across the board, they they agreed with uh, what the public was concerned with, and they also thought those were concerns and priorities. And then we also had them conduct an audit tool, which is a self-assessment. Um, it was developed by Minnesota Sea Grant. It's, it's basically a checklist to show their readiness for hazards such as flood and drought. Climate information we used, we did rely heavily on Gleesa. Dan Brown, climatologist, is here, and he was involved in almost all of our planning discussions, and he also came to both public meetings and, uh, and provided some climate science information, answered questions. Um, at the Marquette meeting, there were uh, almost universally people who would fit in that alarmed category, so real, real environmentalists who are very concerned about climate change and want to do something. And then at the Berrien County meeting, there were, it was about half and half, about half who were dismissive and about half who were alarmed, so that was very interesting. The half who were dismissive came from a Patriot group um, in, the, in the whole region. It was the Kalamazoo Area Patriots, I think. So we had to really figure out how to do that a little bit differently than we did in Marquette in terms of Dan's, uh, Dan's interaction with the group. He did a great job. And then our outcomes, really the tangible outcome that we produced for both communities is a comprehensive report 
that gives an overview of what we did and of the community concerns and priorities and makes additional recommendations. And we also provided them with GIS maps based on information that the planners in the community said that they wanted in terms of managing risk. So there'd be like a layer for areas that were prone to flood and a layer that the areas were prone to fire and those 